Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I wanna talk about three proven Ayurvedic remedies for preventing and managing hay fever. Okay, right now, April, all of the pollen in the air is reaching fever pitch from trees, pollens, weeds, grasses, and that's gonna you know, uh, continue to increase over the coming weeks and months, which is what causes the debilitating respiratory symptoms of hay fever. But there is so much that can be done to, to, to prevent that from happening, you know, prevent hay fever really affecting you. And if it does affect if you, knowing how to you know, effectively manage it. Okay, and these are my three top tips that are proven in terms of their mechanisms and their impact. Number one is prevention. Prevention is better than cure. You know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And in that capacity, we can turn to the Ayurvedic practice of Nashia therapy. Okay, Nashia therapy, which is lubrication, the lubrication of the insides of both nostrils. Why is that so important? because how does hay fever occur? It occurs when airborne pollen is breathed into the respiratory tract through the nose. It then enters into all of the respiratory system. It causes an immune response, and that immune response then causes the symptoms. So the best way of preventing hay fever is to stop the pollen getting into the body in the first place. And the way to do that is to keep the mucous membranes, the lining of the nostrils sticky, because the mucous membranes in the nostrils act like flypaper. They're there to catch any viruses or any bacteria or any pollens passing through to stop them getting in. If we can stop them getting in, we, we prevent the issue at source, okay? But as we move into spring and summer, those mucous membranes often dry up. And as they dry up, they become less sticky, which means more pollen can get through. By artificially lubricating the nostrils, we increase their stickiness, which means we catch more pollen, which means we have a bigger preventative cap capacity. And to do that, we can use uh, Ayurvedic oils, uh, herbal oils, um, or we can just use um, you know, plain organic uh, cooking oils. Uh, oils like extra virgin olive oil, extra virgin coconut oil. And all we need to do is get a little bit on a cotton bud and just lubricate the insides of both nostrils in the morning before you leave the house. If you get hay fever badly, maybe a couple of times through the day. Okay, I've seen that have a, a transformative impact upon reducing the prevalence and severity of hay fever. Practice number two, is uh, is increasing the intake of astringent foods. This is key because hay fever, you know, the, the, the primary symptom profile of hay fever is mucus, it's congestion, it's wetness, it's too much fluid, it's snot, it's runny nose, streaming eyes, it's wet. So what we need to do is counteract that with the opposite quality. So we want to increase foods and herbs that have a drying capacity. These are foods that help to dry out the mucous membranes in the body, particularly the respiratory tract. So if we've got hay fever, we have that autoimmune response and we start producing lots of snot, lots of running noses, you're running eyes, you know, constantly blowing your nose. If we can dry up those secretions, we alleviate the symptom severity. And the stringent foods, astringency is dryness. So astringent foods are foods that are proven to dry up the mucous membranes of the body, including that of the respiratory tract. So by drying it up, we alleviate the symptoms. And astringent foods, you'll recognize as the foods that when you bite into them or you drink them, they have a kind of a puckering effect in the mouth. So imagine biting into a really underripe bright green banana. You bite into it and it has that drying sensation. Or drinking a very dry white wine, it has that drying sensation. Or a very strong black tea. So your, your astringent foods, you know, things like pomegranates, things like underripe bananas, pulses, legumes, beans, um, peas, um, you know, all of these kinds of, of astringent foods. If you go online, you'll find loads of guidance on that. And thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, are herbal medicines. And in particular, Ayurveda has the, the, one of the most important uh, herbal medicines for treating and preventing hay fever. Why? Because it's a clinically proven antihistamine. 
Okay, this herb has been clinically proven to alleviate the symptoms of respiratory allergies, including hay fever, by modulating immunity. So we're breathing these pollens in. If we can reduce the immune response to them, then we prevent the severity of the hay fever attack. And that's how antihistamines work, over-the-counter pharmaceutical antihistamines. But this herb is a, is a proven natural botanical antihistamine, and it excels in the prevention of respiratory allergies, including hay fever. This herb is called Gaducci. Okay, Gaducci. Um, it's easy to source online. We recommend Fushi if you're in the UK because of their, you know, they're organic, they're top quality, um, you know, uh, products. So Gaducci is the most, is the most effective antihistamine. Okay. And all you need to do is just take about a thousand milligrams in the morning and a thousand milligrams in the evening. So 2000 milligrams a day with food from about now all the way through to the end of hay fever season. And that's just going to dial down the immune response. It's going to modulate the immune system. It's going to help educate it to not mount these attacks on the pollen. And through doing so, you're getting to the root cause of the problem. So if you adopt those three practices. If you adopt the Nasha therapy to stop the pollen getting in, if you increase the intake of astringent foods to dry up the symptom causing secretions, and if you can modulate the immune system to prevent the problem, that is your triangulated approach to preventing and alleviating the symptoms of hay fever. It works wonders. Any questions around that, please let me know in the comments. Uh, if you want to stay up to date with these videos, uh, your kind of weekly dose of all things healthcare, Ayurveda, herbal medicine, please do subscribe to the channel so you'll get notified when they're released. Any questions, let me know and I'll see you soon.